Okay. All right. Let's deal with the Moss case next. Um, bu -bu -bu -bu. Mr. Capua is here for that. Mr. White is here for that. Mr. DuBose is here. Mr. DuBose is here for that. Mr. Moss is here for that. Is Mr. McGuire, is he here for this case too? Good morning, Your Honor. No, I'm, I'm here, but I'm here for the following setting. Okay. Brandon Kay, what are you here for? Yes, Your Honor. I'm the uh, representative for Fetalismus plaintiffs. Okay. And Ms. Newsom, what are you here for? Um, Your Honor, I'm here for um, cause number DC 20-09-893, uh, the matter of David Taylor Moss and okay. Marco uh, Princip. Okay. Just making sure we have everyone here. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I know we're going to want this on the record, so uh, Mr. Capio, if you could go ahead and announce the case name and cause number, and uh, Tony, we need to go on the record for this. Yes, Judge. Well, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, this is Craig Capio. The style of the case is David Tyler Moss et al. versus Marco Princep uh, et al. Cause number DC 20-09893. And I'm here today on behalf of the plaintiffs slash judgment creditors and ready. Your Honor, um, I'm Gene DuBose for the defendant, Holly Bone, and this is our motion to vacate turnover orders. Your Honor, Jervon Newsom here on behalf of the Google non-parties um, and just here to observe and to see if Your Honor has any questions for Google. Thank you. Anybody else want to make an announcement? Dan Wide, uh, co-counsel with Mr. Capua for the plaintiffs and judgment creditors. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I've read all the briefing on this motion to vacate. It doesn't seem to really cover any new ground. We do have a trial coming up on this case in October 5th. Um, Mr. DeBose, is there anything new that you that has come up that I should change my previous view on this? Well, I don't think this has been before you, Your Honor. Uh, this is with respect to the turnover orders. One of the things that I found in preparing the appeal on the uh, temporary injunction is that it's almost impossible for me to figure out under what order uh, Ms. Bones' funds have been sequestered and her access to her channels uh, taken away. You know, one of the things is you talk about the money that was put in the registry of the court. Some of that was taken out of her account in England to be put there. So it's not, it's not unclear whose money went in there. It was in an account only in her name and all those records are before the court. And it was taken out and put into the court. The question here is, again, a due process claim. And the uh, Texas courts are absolutely uniform that the rights of a third party cannot be determined by an ex parte turnover order. There has to be some sort of hearing, some sort of proof. Both of the cases that the uh, plaintiffs have cited uh, to justify their activity involved cases where the party whose rights were infringed upon was there and had the ability to testify. Uh, Ms. Bone wasn't a party at the time of that first turnover order. All that happened in the pleadings that were put before the court is her name was mentioned, and that was enough to get her stuck into a turnover order. Uh, you know, turnover orders can go beyond. Well, let's make it clear. We, we, we haven't done a turnover order as to any of Miss Bones accounts. We have done a turnover order as to proceeds arriving as, out, of, out of YouTube channels 
that the judgment debtor in this case has previously stated in sworn documents in other courts that he owned, right? We haven't no, turned over any right. of her accounts. No, well, you have. You've taken money out of her account. Um, out of her and out of her checking uh, out of her bank account out of her bank account money that and was in her bank account has been taken out yes of her bank. okay yes that's not my understanding well that's no, uh, not, that's the case no. i believe i've cited uh to the location of that we provided if you remember uh all the money from those channels went through an entity uh a multi-channel network called Freedom Family Limited. Freedom Family Limited took all those funds and they put every penny that came through in the period that they were managing those channels, which was from 2019 until they were cut off at the end of 2020. Every penny went into Ms. Bones' accounts, uh, first here in the United States and then in Great Britain. And if you look at those accounts, the last entry I have in there is money being refunded to uh, Freedom uh, Family Limited out of her account. And that's money that went into the registry of the court. Um, but again, it's, it's her rights. Um, and these are, in fact, her channels. The only thing you have is a statement in his divorce that says, uh, and I quote this, in my reply, there's an order that says that his wife has no rights to what they called uh, his YouTube channel, Futuristic Hub Business. Now, a divorce decree cannot define a third party's rights. What they were doing in that order is talking, they're dividing up who's got income coming. And at that time, Mr. Martin was the manager of that account and he was getting income from it. It wasn't Mr. until then. If I recall, month, Mr. Martin is your client's husband, the judgment. Debt, yes, correct. correct. Um, and, and, and there's you know, an he, he had been dollar. shepherding her through this because you and remember she a, started. And there's an $18 million fraud judgment against him, correct? Yeah. Uh, uh, it depends. I'm not sure of the exact calculations. I think there are two six million dollar uh, personal judgments against him. Um, okay, I thought it was. And uh, pardon? I thought it was 18 million. Is that not right? Mr. Well, uh, I, it, when I go, they yeah, may, it may have been uh, increased dollars. with interest on that, but there are there are two separate judgments against him. Uh, large numbers get thrown around. I just went back to the judgment itself. Uh, in any case, it's a lot of money. Um, so um, the next month, she took the managership away, away from him. Her testimony has been she had no awareness of the judgment until the next year. And she gave it to, she assigned the funds, which only the owner of the channel can do, to Freedom Family Limited. Freedom Family Limited is where this, these channels really started to make money. Before that, they were pretty small. Uh, it went up 67% in, in about a six-month or seven-month period. They know their business. They knew their business. Google's put them out of the business now. But um, so that we get to these $100,000 a month amounts that were being churned out, that money was going only into her account, and it has been taken away from her. Uh, the point is that with both these two, we have two turnover orders, you cannot um, establish the right of a third party. And the, certainly that issue has been raised. And there's plenty of documentary evidence of her ownership of these channels. Um, remember, she was not at the temporary injunction hearing. She was not given notice of that. Um, and if she had been given notice two days before, it would not have been sufficient. Notice means time to get a lawyer, because she didn't have a lawyer at the time, time for him to prepare for a hearing. Uh, none of that happened. So um, she has had this stuff uh, ripped away from her by uh, orders that cannot apply. Her name appears in, in that first order. She wasn't a party. All they do is mention in that uh, when they are when they are applying for the turnover order, uh, 
they just say and, and the turnover that, order just i want to make sure i'm i'm recalling this correctly the turnover order does not in any way order that holly any funds be taken from holly bone it's simply from these youtube channels correct uh, well uh -huh. what it what it says is um the uh, judgment creditors uh, asked to include Holly Martin uh, into the order. Now that's just not right because this, this is actually not so much a turnover over it as a preliminary injunction. Uh, as the Supreme Court decided in the Alexander DuBose cases a couple of years ago, um, turnover orders are fine. You take the money, you give it to the other side. When, however, something is left continue, and obviously this has been put into the registry of the court abiding some later judgment, uh, then this is not a, a, a truly a turnover order. But um, the, um, uh, the order uh, was going against her, her personally, shouldn't have been that. And at that point, there was no evidence whatsoever of the ownership of these channels other than, you know, um, than the plaintiff saying, oh, it's, oh, it's his channel. Um, and that's, that is wrong, Your Honor. It violates due process. Uh, and as I say, in appeal, I don't, I really don't know which particular order has, we've got a, a, a temporary injunction and two turnover orders, uh, one of which uh, goes against Google and Google has, is now out of that. However, Google's still going along with it. Um, and um, uh I don't know which one of those orders is the actual responsible order. And I don't know that anybody can say because they've been all mixed together with respect to the, uh, the order, the Google turnover order uh, in November. It said, by the way, this includes the first turnover order and it includes the temporary injunction, which hadn't heretofore been applied against them. It's, uh, it, it's, it's a nasty can of worms, and I can't figure out exactly where it is, but you know, I'm, I'm trying to get rid of all the things that could possibly be in it. And frankly, I think Google is a party to this case because they have come, they sit in on the hearings. They get, after they were ordered, you know, the orders against them were taken away, they continue to participate. They've been giving information to the court. And I think they need to be joined as a party so that discovery can be taken against them because they, they are the owners of all kinds of records. And in this court, they sort of fumble around, oh, I don't know about this, I don't know about that. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff. For example, both those channels have an owner to them that appears in their records and we have provided those records. And what you do when you have a live YouTube channel you have a password and the password opens up and it says something that says primary owner and the primary owner of both those channels has is and has been forever holly bone a lot of people make up a name she didn't she started this since she was 13 years old it was a it was a lark it wasn't a business she was too young to think of making a living but it prospered because she's something of a genius uh, and all those videos have been made by her but I think Google has to be brought into this lawsuit because of their activity in this lawsuit. They say, oh, we only appeared under a, uh, uh, you know, a, a protected provision. I, we're not really involved. They're involved up to their ears. Uh, and I will be, you know, be trying to bring them in for discovery purposes uh, on that basis. Because it's right now, I don't know what order there is that has taken Ms. Bone's money away. I don't know what order it is that has cut her off from these channels. She can't put more um, content on them so that the uh, $100,000 100, a month income was reduced a couple Mr. of months Dubois, ago to $22,000. There's, there's a very simple solution to all of this is you know, there's a couple. One is that we need to get to trial. It's in October, I think, uh, on this issue. Her husband has not been cooperating with Discovery. He's fled the country. Uh, and, uh, you know, and I, I don't have any opposition to you conducting Discovery as to Google. We've had quite a bit of Discovery as to Google so far. Um, 
and we'll make a determination in October. I think that's when the trial is set on who owns these channels. And so, uh, but if there is some confusion as to which order is, is, is doing this, if there's any orders out there that are taking money directly out of Ms. Bones' account, that should not be the case, but it should be these channels and, and some court documents there, it says that uh, ju the judgment debtor owns it, I guess, and the other things it says that Ms. Bone enters it and we just need to make a determination. It would be very helpful if Mr. Martin would participate and, and be a part of this so that we could hear his side of the story and explanation. Obviously, it's very, very suspicious that Ms. the judgment debtor's wife all of a sudden owns all of these properties when in the past they've taken the position that he owned all of it. Once he gets a judgment, now she owns it. That's suspicious. That's why I've, I've uh, frozen these accounts. And, and so that if, if it turns out that Mr. Martin, who has uh, fled the country again and has an $18 million fraud judgment against him, maybe not 18 million, but that's what it's been represented in the past. Uh, if he would participate, uh, we'd be able to have a better idea of exactly what's going on. But for now, we just need to, uh, I think, keep the status quo. Unless, Ms. Cap Mr. Capua, there may be a reason that we need to vacate one of these. You have to defend these on appeal. And so uh, I'm okay with vacating. There's been a lot of orders. I agree with Mr. DeBose. There's been quite a few orders that have been submitted in this case. And um, it's been a little bit tortured history. So, but uh, Mr. Cappy, any of these orders need to be vacated to help your chances on appeal? No, Your Honor, I'm, I'm fine with the current status of the orders. Mr. DeBose, I would just ask your client to have her husband participate. This is really, if she really is the owner, and I, I don't believe she is, but if she really is the owner, it's his actions that are causing all this to happen. He's not cooperating with any court proceeding at this point. He's fled the country. He's, and, and we have this $18 million judgment that has to be, uh, you know, the, the, that there's an attempt to try to collect. Uh, and if he would participate, it would make this all a lot quicker and easier. And we could figure out uh, kind of how to go forward, but he's, fled the country and uh, is refusing. To, and I understand that she's, is she still in England as well? Is she also? Oh yeah. She's a pretty citizen. She was only here for a matter of about a year or so. Okay. He's not a British citizen though. No, he's not a British citizen. And he's supplied, you know, um, a declaratory uh, a declaration uh, in support of her position and with uh, an association with the uh, motion to, uh, uh, to vacate the uh, the, t uh, the temporary injunction. So uh, again, he's not my client. I can't speak for him, but I'm sure he will be testifying in this matter. Um, but I'm also imagining that whenever this goes to trial, that uh, that my client is going to be testifying from England. Uh, I don't know that. And, 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 and let me say this, that I have no problem with your client testifying from England uh, even if, let's say, somehow the coronavirus is, is but, somehow yeah, that whole pandemic is dealt with, uh, even if I don't have any problem with her testifying from England, uh, I am going to have a problem with, unless unless we're still in status red, uh, him testifying from England. I want him to come to the United States because this is yeah. his responsibility. She she may be an innocent victim here. I don't I don't believe that. But that is a possibility. Uh, so I have no problem with her testifying personally. Of course, Mr. Capua may have and other counsel may have other opinions and they can raise those. Uh, I do have a significant issue with him testifying. I will probably not allow him to testify via Zoom. So he will need to be here if he wants to testify. Yeah. Unless unless he I, can't. Get I, I'll, I'll probably have an issue with that, Your Honor. Well, uh, well, given just, the I just want to let you, a... I know if he can and if it's, if, if it's possible for him to get here, because it, I'm not taking into account the COVID situation, but assuming that he can get here and that the COVID situation isn't preventing him from traveling here, uh, I'm probably not going to allow him to testify virtually. But if it is the only way, if everyone else has to testify virtually, he can testify virtually. Well, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come. We'll cross that time. bridge. I just want to make it clear. I want him to get here if at all possible. He needs to, this is his, this is entirely his responsibility, all of this. 
and his the way he's dealt with this. He has an $18 million judgment against them. He has fled the country. He's told us he's not going to participate in any of these proceedings. You know, it's, <laughs> this is all him. So uh, it's, I apologize if, if, if it truly is a situation where your wife, your client's uh, you know, the, the innocent victim here, I feel uh, bad. But I, I think I what, that. she is, she is really kind of a holy innocent. She's very young. Um, she is, uh, I have stressed that she is autistic, which means she operates very internally. I have had a, a, um, an autistic nephew. Um, and, uh, you know, she has this gift of making these videos, which is sort of the center of her life. Uh, she's a charming, intelligent woman. I don't know how she'll bear up under cross-examination. I find her open, intelligent, and entirely credible. Um, and also, uh, she, you know, you say, well, why shouldn't she suspect him? She's not a... a, a Autistic people don't think the, in the linear way that you and I think. You and I, of course, you know, we've been, we're lawyers. We've been around. We always have a suspicion something is going on here. She doesn't. You know, she just really doesn't. Um, but, you know, that's, that's a bridge that's going to get crossed uh, at, at some later time. Um, but my, my question for day, today is, are you vacating these orders or not? No. I'm not going to vacate unless Mr. Capua wants me to vacate. I, I, I do, the one concern I do share with you, Mr. Debose, is there were a lot of orders that were entered in this case. Some of them I found I didn't really like all of the terminology in them, and so I did vacate some of them. Uh, but if Mr. Capua, who is a very able counsel, who I've always known to be very forth, forthright, feels like he can defend these on appeal, I'll, it's his call. So. Uh, I'm gonna. If, if but if there's anything you want to have vacated, Mr. Capua, to improve your chances on appeal, then I'm happy to vacate it. But it sounds like you, you don't want, and it's not going to hurt my feelings if you do want to vacate anything, Mr. Capua. Your Honor, at this time, our position is we would request that the court not vacate any orders. I believe I can defend them on appeal. And, and the other thing I want to I want to say is that I really do want to get this thing tried in October. Uh, so, because if Miss Bone really is an innocent party, I want to get this case over with so that we can stop this, uh, you know, this turnover. And so, we need to make it. A, I've been saying this for quite a while. We need to make a determination who owns this. Is it what was represented in independent documents before uh, before the fraud judgment, or is it is it really Miss Bone? And then if Miss Bone is the innocent owner, we need to get her out funds back and so uh, I don't believe I don't know obviously I question that but uh, but we need to get this case to trial so uh, I'm going to instruct Google you need to cooperate with discovery are you saying Google's not cooperating with discovery Mr. DuBose they've always said when I asked them are you going to be subject to discovery in this case and they have told me no Ms. Newsom why aren't you subject to discovery in this case your Honor, I, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, Mr. DeBose, what communication or who he uh, spoke with, uh, but we have absolutely been cooperative uh, with the subpoenas that have been served. Um, we have um, supplemented our productions and we have not received any um, complaints or anything uh, that, that says we haven't produced something. Uh, we're more than willing to uh uh, to supplement and, and do what we need to do. So uh, this is the first time I'm hearing um, uh, about us not cooperating in discovery. Mr. DeVos, maybe- Your Honor, I got some... Go ahead, Mr. Kaplan. Oh, so, Your Honor, may, may I make some comments on that? All right, so here's my my issue with, with Google. Um, Google claims it's a non-party to this case, but I, I sent some law to Google claiming that it and it is a party due to the garnishment proceeding. That's number one. But two, I sent Google a request for production of documents a while back, and uh, their position was uh, that California, where the headquarters is at, uh, does not want Google responding to requests for production because then it might make them appear as a party. And so then I went ahead and sent my request for production of documents 
out to Google's headquarters through a subpoena in California and the attorney out there, the in-house counsel, they objected to every one. And I will, I will say Google has provided me with some documents, but as it relates to ownership, it's always been my opinion, Google, please send me 1099s. Please send me a three or four year history of money that has been monetized and who it has went to. And I haven't received those documents, Your Honor. And so that's been a little bit of, of, of my uh, frustration. I've been, I've been trying to work with uh, Mr. Hurst and, and his team, but I think if these documents could come to the table, that would assist the court greatly, just as if uh, I, I filed a motion to compel against Ms. Bone, Martin, yesterday, because again, if she claims she's on these channels ever since she was 13 years old, which is 2012, show me some documents that you have owned the station, that the channel for the last nine years. I haven't received the type of documents you would expect if you've been monetizing these uh, channels, not for the last two years, because that's when we believe Brian Martin was involved in some sort of fraudulent transfer, but since 2012, and I haven't received those documents. And I think, again, if parties would be more forthcoming to produce these documents I'm talking about, it would assist the court greatly in making the correct decision as to who's the actual owner. So with all that said, Your Honor, if, if you could make an order from the bench ordering Google to, to produce these, these documents that I've been asking, or if, I need to, or if I have to go through a whole motion to compel process, I'll do whatever the court wants. I'm just trying I mean, to- I mean, ultimately you'd have to go through a motion to compel process, but I'll just tell you, Ms. Newsom, I would order that to be produced. That's the critical issue in this case is who owns, that really owns these channels and they're in, you know, tra tracking who got the money over time would be very, very helpful, especially if, if it was, you know, for example, if it was Miss Bone the entire time getting the money, then that's strong evidence for Miss Bone. If it was Mr. Martin getting the money, and then when the fraud judgment occurred, it, it was Miss Bone, that would be strong evidence to the contrary. And so we need to get that discovery, but I'm not going to order it. I'm just going to tell you that's, it would help us avoid a hearing. So if, if I may, Your Honor, I just want to make a clarification here. Um, we just received, uh, and I'm looking at it right now, this was August, I think, 3rd, uh, a request for production to Google um, asking for these 1099s. And so this is my first time, uh, this is our first time getting this in the proper form to Google. And so mm -hmm. we are in the process right now in uh, discussing that with the client and getting what we need to get. So I don't want it to be perceived by the court that we've been asked for these 1099s several times and we haven't complied. This is, the, okay. this is my first time seeing this. Sounds good, guys. Uh, just get me an order on this motion to vacate, Mr. Capua, and uh, let's try to get this ready for trial. We want to get this done, hopefully in October. So uh, go ahead and get that to me as soon as you can. And it's not going to be an excuse to not go to trial if you don't have this stuff. I would think that both of you would want this, Mr. DuBose. Uh, so aggressively getting this from Google is key to this case. So, uh, But I got to get to my next hearing, uh, so we're going to let you go. Thank you so much, Your Honor. You have a great day and a weekend. Thank you, you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, who's here for the last hearing?